Good day, distinguished delegates, ministers, religious leaders, and colleagues. It is a pleasure to be addressing you today. I'm sorry I cannot be with you in person, but technology has given us the opportunity to contribute despite barriers of distance and time. At this important gathering, I'm pleased to share a few re reflections derived from the teachings and experience of the worldwide Baha'i community. Humanity today is struggling to harmonize the activities of a growing, rapidly developing and fractured global population with the reality of a finite planet and our shared destiny. Yet, we are approaching the crowning stage of a millennia long process of collective social and spiritual development. The defining characteristic of this age is the oneness of humankind. Widely accepted practices and conventions, cherished attitudes and habits will need to be re-examined in light of this reality. As long as the call for unity remains unheeded the world's current state of disorder and degradation will worsen, possibly with catastrophic consequences, until a chastened humanity sees fit to take a significant step towards constructive change. With that as the broad context for these remarks, I plan to spend the balance of my time articulating four brief elements what the Baha'i faith says about our relationship with nature, the importance of ethical faith-based action, unity, and examples of what this looks like in practice. What the Baha'i faith says about our relationship with nature. Alongside other religions, the Baha'i faith offers insight into the nature of humanity's relationship with the environment. Baha'u'llah affirmed that the natural world is a reflection of the beauty and perfection of God when he said, nature in its essence is the embodiment of my name, the maker, the creator. Nature is God's will and is its expression in and throughout the contingent world. The Baha'i writings describe the harmonious diversity of nature, provides insight into how we should treat others with dignity, respect, and compassion, and affirms our oneness. Consider the world of created beings, how varied and diverse they are in species, yet with one sole origin. All the differences that appear are those of outward form and color. This diversity of type is apparent throughout the whole of nature. Let us look at the beauty in diversity, the beauty of harmony, and learn a lesson. Baha'u'llah also enjoys his, enjoins his followers to practice stewardship of the earth as an expression of world citizenship, affirming that nature should not be exploited for self-interest. Only to the degree that relationships with others and the natural world are consciously improved can progress continue. We cannot segregate the human heart from the environment outside us and say that once one of these is reformed, everything will be improved. Man is organic with the world. His inner life molds the environment and is itself so deeply affected by it. The one acts upon the other and every abiding change in the life of man is the result of these mutual reactions. Establishing sustainable patterns of individual and collective life, therefore, requires a new conception of ourselves and our place in the world. In a recent message, the governing body of the Baha'i faith said, every choice a Baha'i makes leaves a trace and the moral duty to lead a coherent life demands 
that the purity of one's aims be matched by the purity of one's actions to fulfill these aims. On the importance of ethical faith-based actions. The importance of science to climate action and environmental protection is no longer in doubt. However, there is less agreement on the role of religion as a complementary source of knowledge. Yet experience has shown that progress for all is not attainable if material advancement is divorced from spiritual and ethical advancement. The foundation of the environmental crisis today is in fact a spiritual crisis. Our problems cannot be solved without some agreement among the peoples of the world who are about who we are as human beings. What is our moral responsibility to one another and as trustees of the planet? What principles can serve to unite us? It is here that religion can offer insight. When true to the spirit of its founders, religion has been one of the most powerful tools for the creation of new and beneficial patterns of individual and community life. It encourages traits such as truthfulness, equity, trustworthiness, and generosity, and demonstrates the value of cooperation as an organizing principle for activity, making the community resilient in the face of shocks. The cultivation of such attitudes can foster respect and care for our environment. This posture and approach, when loyally applied, will help humanity advance, whether through the framework of the SDGs or any other developmental plan. Unity in action. The current state of the planet is the result of billions of confounding individual choices with lesser and great impact. What if religion could generate a stronger opposing force by inspiring countless souls to take greater number of decisions that work for the betterment of society? The transformative power of these simple actions undertaken at the grassroots tied together in a common framework should not be underestimated. After all, it is how we got here. While our planet's resources are finite, the power of the human spirit is limitless. What was once viewed as an idealistic vision of international cooperation to protect our planet has in light of the serious changes facing humanity become a pragmatic necessity. Urgent attention is needed through local action by communities seeking and implementing local solutions. National governments taking decisions and implementing nature positive policies and the global community agreeing on shared values and a shared vision for the world we want, while translating existing commitments into action. Strengthening relationships then, including those among people of different faiths and backgrounds, must be at the heart of any sustainable effort. The establishment of a Faith for Earth coalition represents a significant step to unify action at various levels and will provide a vital form, a vital platform for religion and science to be drawn on as complementary sources of knowledge. Finally, I wish to share with you two examples from the Baha'i community putting such an approach to action. In thousands of settings across the planet, Baha'is are working alongside others to learn about new patterns of relationships and corresponding social structures that embody the principle of the oneness of humankind. They are setting in motion processes of capacity building that enable people of all backgrounds to participate in the transform transformation of society.
In fact, within Iceland itself, this vision and approach dates back to the 1950s, when an individual Baha'i, Hokum Egertsson, inspired by his faith, headed a reforestation project in Skogar. At that time, only a handful of people saw value in his actions. Yet, his beliefs motivated him to act for future generations. Since then, the deforestation efforts have continued, generating appreciation among the general public about the value of forests, with the hope of serving the community as an outdoor classroom for children and youth in the future. Further afield, and within the past few years, in Zambia, a group, group of youth participated in a Baha'i-inspired program aimed at building their capacity to be of service to their communities. As they assessed local needs, they focused on the health of their ecosystems. There was one area in which many ponds had lost their fish stocks. The group began to revitalize the ponds and to raise consciousness in the community about sustainable fishing. These efforts then stimulated other activities related to the protection of biodiversity, such as tree planting. Equally important, the conversations and actions arising from the group's endeavors contributed to improving certain aspects of the local culture, as diverse members of the community are now working shoulder to shoulder. Indeed, an appreciation for our natural heritage can lead to concerted action to protect the environment and also strengthen the patterns of community life. Though these examples are simple, they offer a glimpse into the transformative power of faith to motivate action. Yet, for such an approach to have the necessary effect, it will need to be a truly global endeavor that will require the deconstruction of old habits as much as the construction of new ones. Looking to a prosperous future, the world stands more in need of the hope and the strength of spirit that faith imparts. Were it to truly be drawn on, it could shine a light amidst a darkened world and instill an appreciation and sense of responsibility for our shared homeland. This is a collective task, and we look forward to walking this path together. Thank you.